is Rachel continually in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth, in my mouth, in my mouth, his praise shall continually
trials come. On every hand. But I feel like going on. Church, I feel like. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Don't try your come on every hand. I feel like going on. The Lord, He's been so good to me. The Lord, been mighty, mighty, mighty good to me. Don't try your tongue on every hand. I feel like going on. Jesus told the main line. Tell him. Jesus told the main line. Just on the main line. Call him up. Well, I tell you, Jesus is on the main line. Jesus is on the main line. Jesus is on the main line. All of them. Well, call him up. Call him up. Tell him. Call him. Tell him. Come on. Call him. Tell him. Well, call him up. One more time. Call him up. Tell him. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him. Well. Hallelujah. Call him. Call him. In the morning. Call him. In the noonday. Yeah. Come on and call him. In the midnight hour. Call him. Call him out. Yeah, tell him what you want. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the call of worship. Almighty and gracious God, it is a privilege to worship you this day in this community of saints. May our praise be joyful, may our hearts be turned towards you, and may our souls be quenched with the waters of your word. We give you all the glory and praise and gratitude this day and forever. In Christ's name, let us praise the Lord. We have come together to worship, praise, and sing 
to find joy here, celebrating the one who made us. Expand the nets of our love that we may reach deeply and share abundantly. In Christ's name we pray. Let us praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing and join in our hymn found on page 281, Because He Lives, or you can use our monitors. Amen.
seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church. Your announcement for today are as follows. Wednesday morning prayer at 6.30 a.m. Call 1667-770-1259, pin code 790-771 pounds. Please join us for adult and youth Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Start this year off with coming to Sunday school and learning more about God. Amen. Amen. Please join us for Bible study Tuesday at 6 p.m. We are studying the book of John, taught by Pastor Carter. Please consider being part of the AV ministry. This team of volunteers will be part of the production team, which will assist in streaming the service of our virtual audience. This requires a volunteer to church and I prior to service. Therefore, you must be dependable and punctual. Please see George Haley Jr. for more information. Please join us for official men's day service on Sunday, March 24th. <laughs> Amen. During our 10 a.m. worship service, we are having excited. Um, we are excited about this event. Reverend Dr. Gregory P. Nelson will be the guest preach, preacher for this service. These are programs you do not want to miss. Please see Brother Edward Meadows, man, Men's Day Chairperson, for more information. Free Good Friday service. Come as we hear from our own ministries of Franklin St. John's seven dy dynamic speakers. We'll preach on the seven last words of Jesus on Tuesday, March 26th at 7. I hope to see you there. Amen. Yes. Please join us for our seven, for our seven sins that killed Jesus service on Good Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m. This program is going to feature a diverse group of preachers who is going to bring power messages. Please spread the word about the society services. Amen. And please join us for Comedy Goes to Church <laughs> by Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church on Saturday, April 13th. This show starts at 7 p.m. and the doors open at 6 p.m. The event will be held at South Valley Barbecue, 34th South Valley Road, West Orange, New Jersey. The tickets are 30 in events and, and 45 at the door. Please see Megan for more information or go to www.bumpertobumper.com to purchase tickets. Amen. Amen. Now, will all visitors please stand? Just, she was standing there. Okay. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning announcements, and may God continue to bless you, not just good, but real good. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. How many people came yesterday to our pre-men's uh, pre day Amen. celebration? Oh, my goodness. It was off the chain, okay? We had an amazing time, and then our guest preacher, Reverend James E. Walker really brought a powerful Amen. prophetic message yesterday. And I'm here to tell you that is a foretaste of what we are going to get next Sunday. So next Sunday, make sure that you come and I want you to at least invite 20 people. Just invite them, okay? Even if they don't show up, okay? Just try to call 20 people. You know 20 people, all right? Um, because we are excited about that. And, 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 and also you've already heard 
about the two um, services that are happening uh, during Holy Week. Now, I know how church people like to do. And y'all like to say, well, pastor, I'm not coming to both services. So I'm either <laughs> going to come on Tuesday or I'm going to come on Friday. But I, I beseech thee by the mercies of God that you would come out both nights. Amen. Tuesday night is going to be a night where we're going to hear from our own in-house ministers. So we want to make sure that you come out to support our Amen. own. Amen. Amen. Because support and love starts at home first. And then on Friday, we dare not invite people to our house and not be here to greet them. So we want you all to show up in the Franklin St. John way that y'all show up and show love. We have some amazing pastors and clergy persons who, who, are, who are coming from, from, from different um, groups and also different ethnicities. Right. One, one, of, one of my goals, one of my vision is not to be a one dimensional church and, and just feel like we always have to have black people come, okay? Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing right there, okay? But um, because the world is bigger than just black and whites and, you know, uh, and, and also not only is it going to be different ethnicities, but it's also going to be different denominations. So then, you know, we have a Pentecostal preacher. We have a Presbyterian preacher. We have a UMC pastor. So please come out and, and support these events, which are going to be amazing. And at, at this time, we are going to call forth uh, Dr. Martin Dickerson, who is going to come forward with a special announcement uh, concerning the Gideon Bibles. How many people know the Gideon Bibles? How many people ever been to a hotel and then you opened up that drawer? And then in that drawer, you saw that Bible. And what did it say on there? It said Gideon. Okay, good. He's coming at this time to speak. So let's give him a hand as he comes. Good morning. Good morning. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Honor this uh, this great pastor, Pastor Carter, and the members of the church. Good morning, and God bless you. Have anyone ever seen a pocket-sized Bible like this? Um, in the the Gideons are an organization that has been in existence for 125 years. We give our Bibles in over 200 countries and territories, in 88 different languages. So if you go anywhere in the world, you're likely to see a Gideon Bible. When I first became a Gideon, some people actually thought the Gideons was a church. Well, what the Gideon church, what city is that in? There's no such thing as a Gideon church. Well, how about that Gideon Bible? It's not even a Gideon Bible. It's the word of our Lord and Savior. And it just has a Gideon implant to show you that the Gideons are the ones that provided for this Bible. So what do the Gideons do? Well, first of all, who are we? We are professional and businessmen all over this world. And our one mission, the mission of the Gideons, is to win men, women, boys and girls to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do it in three different ways. One is by getting together as an organization and giving out the, the word of God in the traffic lanes of life. Pastor just talked about the hotels, but we don't just give them out in the hotels. We give them out in the hospitals, prisons, schools, colleges, universities, doctors and nurses office, dentist offices. And we give the word out at fairs and street fairs. So um, you might have seen us doing that. Where do, why do we go? We go because we're an extension arm of the church. You cannot be a Gideon unless you have been um, appointed. And you can only be a Gideon if you're recommended by your pastor. In other words, when I became a Gideon almost 30 years ago, my pastor, the pastor Sharp, who's going home to be with the Lord, he recommended me for the job to do. And uh, I represented our church well, and I tried to represent uh, the gospel well. Now, I'll give you just a quick, short testimony. There was a young man named Salander, and Salander was working, uh, supporting his family. He had three children and a wife, and he was in a foreign country. I'll tell you which country that is in a minute. And uh, he was working hard, and then some things happened that caused problems in this country. And his mission was, how can I get the word of God out to those in need? 
Here's what he decided to do. First of all, the country is the Ukraine. He wanted to make sure that the men that was on the front line serving and fighting against Russia was able to get the word of God and for those that weren't saved to give a testimony to try to win some to Christ. So that's what he did. He volunteered for the army. He went to the front lines and he gave out hundreds of Bibles to the soldiers that was there and ministered to many. Unfortunately, on December the 20th of 2022, he was killed. So he went home to be with the Lord, but he went home doing what God called him to do. That's the kind of work that Gideons do. Sometimes it can cost you your life, but are you willing to lay down your life for the Lord because he already laid down his life for you? Now, where do we go? I'm just going to give you an example of some of the outreaches that we've done just recently. Kenilworth High School, 200 Bibles. Lincoln Tech and uh, Union, 445 Bibles. The Center for Hope and Hospice and, and Palliative Care in Scotch Plains, and Elizabeth, 100 Bibles. Crowns Plaza Hotel in Newark Airport, 150 Bibles. We also gave out um, Bibles to Rutgers University, we gave out over 3,000 Bibles, which is my alma mater. I think I got two minutes left. How can you help us? There's three ways in which you can actually help us. One is to pray for us, pray for the Gideons. They're Gideons in all parts of the world, and some of them are dangerous. Some of them are Muslim countries where they don't readily accept the Bible. So you got to be willing to go into dangerous zones sometime in order to, to preach the word. Christians are killed every day. I know that y'all don't think that because we live here in the United States. But there's other parts of the world where it costs you your life to speak the name of Jesus Christ. I've had the opportunity to go and give our Bibles in Uganda, in South Africa, in Tanzania. In fact, one of the greatest uh, trips I had was in Tanzania where I went into a maximum security prison with 300 prisoners in the same room and told them about the gospel. 38 people came to Jesus. I gave our Bibles. And you know what? I got to tell you something. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't scared. I hugged half those prisoners. I didn't care. Well, you know, and it was 90 degrees in there. There was no air conditioning. This was in the summertime in Tanzania. So, you know, I felt gratified that I was able to serve the Lord. So what you can do, you can pray for us. The other thing is by um, giving donations, which are tax deductible. Envelopes were given to you to where you can give to the ministry. And that money goes to provide a Bible. Every $5 or $25 provides five of those hosp five of those Bibles that you see in the hotels. And a dollar twenty-five actually pays for one of these small testaments. So we do a, a lot with the little, which is what Gideon did. And the other way is the pastor can al always recommend a man in the congregation who's professionally qualified to become part of the Gideons and to help us in the service. And the last thing I'll say is that we also have cards, which I'm going to provide for the pastor at the end of the service. You can purchase Gideon cards to give to fellow members and friends. And why do you do this? If somebody dies, I donate Bibles, 25 Bibles. Now, I can still buy flowers, but those flowers are going to die and going to be long, for gone, long forgotten. Amen. That Bible will last forever. That's right. So I want to thank the pastor, and I thank you for your time this morning. It's been a pleasure. God bless you. Amen. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Again, uh, if you would like to give a donation to the Gideon Ministry, please see Dr. Um, Dickerson at the conclusion of, of the service. He'll be standing in the back, and then he'll be able to take your donation. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to have the affirmation of faith. Good morning, church. Good morning. Please stand as you're able and join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Yes, what I wanna do, Lord. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. All I'm on this pilgrim journey. I'm on Jesus. Walk with me. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Why am I on this? Pilgrim journey. I want you to walk with me. Come on. Walk. Walk. Won't you walk with me? Walk with me. Walk with me. Talk with me.
Good morning. Please stand as you are able for the scripture. Um, reading this from Psalm 15, King James Version. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall, dwell, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiddeth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that swear to his own hurt and changes not. He, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Sanctuary choir.
Stop by, Lord, stop by. Anybody need him to stop by this morning? Hallelujah. At this time, we are going to have our morning prayer by Reverend Griselda Johnson. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name. We exalt you, God. We thank you that you had us to come into your house to give your name glory and praise. Father, we thank you that you gave us an opportunity, Amen. God, to worship you Hallelujah. in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you that you gave us a place where we can enter your gates with thanksgiving and come a little higher and deeper into your courts with praise. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for being Elohim and El Elyon. Thank you. Hallelujah for being the multi-breasted one. Thank you, God, for being our protector, our comfort.
covering our keeper. Thank you, Father God, for you number the hairs on our very head. God, you want to bless your people on today. So, Father, we come in with open hearts and open minds, oh God. Father, open us up, oh God, and do the surgery in our hearts that you need to do. Father, for you know us in our down setting, in our early rising, so we present our bodies to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which you said is your reasonable service. Father, we say, do what you need to do in your people on today. Father, we need you to stop by our homes, oh God. Father, we need you to stop by the prisons, oh God. Father, we need you to stop by the hospitals, oh God. Father, the street corners, oh Father God. We need you to visit hearts and minds, oh God, so that we can be the transformational people that you have called us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, you know what we stand in need of. God, you know us in our moanings and groanings. You know what we need before we even ask. God, you know more about what we need than we even know what we need. Uh, we trust you on today. We stand on your word on today, oh God. We turn our plans over to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, do what you need to do on this day, oh God. But Father, we came in here hungry and thirsty because we need a word from you. We need a touch from you. We need a new anointing, oh God. We need fresh oil, oh Father God. We need you like never before. So we come in knowing that there's no other place that we can go but to you. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Give us a word from on high today, O oh God. Father God, we say touch the man of God who has the words of life that you have given unto him in his prayer closet. Oh, Father God, that he will release it with power, that he will release it with authority, O oh God, that we will be able to hear, O oh Father God, knowing that it is not him that speaks, but it is you, O oh Father God, because you allow him to to be a yielded vessel for your glory, oh Father. So we wait with beckoned hearts, oh God, as a deer panted after the water broke. God, we want to hear from you, oh God. Bring that word today, oh, like never before, so we can run this race, that we can run this race, oh God, that we would even leave here telling everyone, oh God, our hearts burn because we gather together as a collective body and you spoke today to us, gave us the word that would change our very lives. So, Father, we thank you in advance because we know you're going to deliver. We thank you in advance, oh God, because we know when we hear this life-changing word that we will change in the name of Jesus. God, we don't even want to be like we were when we walked in the door. Oh God, let the fire from heaven fall like never before in the name of Jesus. And we promise we'll give your name praise. We promise we'll give your name glory we will try to steal your credit but we will say look at what the lord has done in the mighty marvelous and matchless name of jesus the true and the living god amen 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 it is offering time in the sanctuary and we ask today that as you give, you give willingly, knowing that God Amen. loves a cheerful giver. Ushers, come and serve the people of God. Those who are watching virtually are also able to give through Givelify, which is on your screens. Thank you. 
Blessings flow. Father God, we are so grateful for this day and this time to worship you in spirit and in truth. So God, today, as we give these gifts back to you, because you've given to us so freely, God, accept it as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So God, bless us, bless our minds, bless our church, Bless our families, bless our communities, bless our goals, bless our ambitions, bless everything that we put our hands to do because God, your word said that you would bless that which we put our hands to do, that you would bless it. 
So God, send us blessings that we don't have room to receive. And God, any way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. Yeah. We say this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the Amen. presence of the Lord. Amen. Franklin St. John is a church where it is a church of love. And when we do not see people who are here, please reach out to them. Give them a call. And, and also, if someone is not here and then if they are sick or, or going through, please be sure to let me know or let Reverend, Reverend Cook know so that we can um, be in communication with them. Um, at this time, our, our lay leader, Sister Iris, is going to come forward and she's just going to share what God has laid on her heart for this morning. Let's give her a hand Amen. as she comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in the sanctuary. Now you have to forgive me. This is just gonna be real talk. See this phone? I know how to call. I know how to text, but I'm trying to find this scripture that I had found, and then it got lost. So <laughs> now I'm looking for this, and have you ever lost your phone? I put a, um, a little, I have the track, but I put security in. So every time I'm trying to go on this phone, I got to put my security number in, but I have it. And it says Galatians 6, 9, and 10 says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now, are we a family? Yes, know it, know it and operate in it. When I pray, I remember to pray for the saints and nearly saints of Franklin St. John's, my church family. We are a family and as such, we owe dedication to each other. We are not doing anyone any service by them being not among us and we not reaching out to find out what it is, where you been. Come on back, we miss you. Because we want everybody to win. Pastor Carter, who was the pastor that came from the South when we had the revival? And he sat over there, a strong man, and he said, I want you to win. And I remember that. I don't remember his name, but if I saw his face, I, that resonated in me. He made me believe. He wanted me to win when he said it. I felt it. And I will always remember those words. He said, I want you to win. And I believe that. We are all God has. Amen. He only has us. We have to do the work 
that he has called us to do. This pastor that we have, Pastor William D. Carter III, is dedicated to this church. Amen. Now, who is the church? And I think I've said this before. This is a beautiful building. But we all got up right now and walked out there and went on to the parking lot and went home. Wouldn't be a thing in here. Wouldn't be a thing he'd be able to do. He wouldn't have anybody to preach to. There wouldn't be any collections. None of our obligations would be met because we wouldn't be a church. The church is only, when I was a teacher, I would shun the people who said it's a, that's a failing school. Schools don't fail, and God didn't make any failing people. So people don't fail. So it's up to us to be great. David McCombs, Ayana, Noah, Zion, Rodney, Nat, Sandra Carney, Miss Lusane. I'm just calling me. I love these people. Mr. Mitchell, I covet Griselda's father. Because that's a bad brother, Alfred Mitchell. Amen. Yes, he is. Yeah. The medals, the beautiful lady in the back. She can cook. She got daughters that can cook. I don't even know her first name, but I know she can cook. <laughs> the, the brother, the Gideon brother, I'm going to support you. And he's been coming. I don't even know his name, but he's always there. Yeah. He was there yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Just dedicated. We have got to be dedicated to this work. Why? Because God that got on that cross, glory to God, got up there didn't, he didn't want to do it, but he did it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. He died. Think of that. Somebody who knew you were coming and died for you. Yeah, he, he did that for us. And, and I know I'm grateful. Are you grateful? Oh, yeah. Yes, we're grateful people that he did this. Now, Pastor Carter came over there and they asked me to speak. I bet he wished he was. See, I'm the preacher's daughter. You don't get a preacher's daughter, Mike. All right. But we want to do a great thing. Yeah. We can... This church can be blown up. I've been to other churches and I know people and I have taught literally hundreds of thousands of children over the years and nobody is any greater than any of you. They're not. I know a lot of people. And none of them any greater than Ed and Joanne Metal, Carol Carter, Mary Simpson, Reverend Cook, who she the Reverend of everybody, all over the place, doing everything. The person next to you is awesome. Look at them and say, you're awesome. You're awesome. Yes. yes. And be, with us being awesome, we're going to make this an awesome church an amazing church we have an amazing pastor if you've seen these people that he brings in here see you got to be out there being who you are in order to draw those people to you 
It's a reason he knew the, what was it, Reverend Walker yesterday? Awesome man of God. Man. If you weren't there, you missed it. Yeah. We don't want you to miss what's going on in this church. I know you got your stuff you got to do. And Lord knows I love to do nothing better than anybody I know. I could do nothing for you. I'm real good at it. But we want you to get involved. Get involved in the work of this church. And as we do that, we're doing it as to who? Not unto Pastor Carter, not unto Mother Carter, not unto Minister Griselda, not unto the awesome Professor Emery Lee, not unto Judy Hood, who does a magnificent job all the time, not unto Hortense, not unto, as unto God. We have got to give him our best. Yeah, yeah. Now think about it. Take a second. Is there something more that you can do? Oh, yeah. Is there something more that you can do within yourself? And let us dedicate ourselves to doing that. Because we're not doing it as unto me. We're not doing it as unto Sister Cookie who tried to pull everything out of everybody but you're doing it as unto the God we serve. Yeah. Yeah. He's an awesome God, yes? Yeah. He's amazing, he's mighty, he's Emmanuel. I listened to that song today and I miss Nani, who would sing Emmanuel with Carol and Pastor. We wanna do good. We don't want Christine and Lynette, who's really an alto, but she can sing soprano. We need some sopranos in the choir. If you can sing, come on and join the choir. If there's something, if you like to usher, go to Bernstein back there in the back, dedicated. Brother Williams, dedicated. Join the ushers. When we have programs, come on out. Because I tell you, every time you want to get blessed, coming on out, you can join um, Sister Walker over there. She needs coats. You know, the people, the, the migrants and all of that, I didn't know they were here. They're here too. Because when Cheryl said they wear blankets, that's how they bring them, bring, give them a blanket. They don't give them a coat. So I knew they were here. Join the, the ministry of the Agape Food Ministry. She's been doing an amazing job for many years. But is there something else you can do? When the doors of this church opens, come on in and bring somebody with you. Now, as, as lay leader, you're the lay people. I can't do anything unless you come aboard. So in April, we're going to start moving toward our shared ministry a portion for December. We're gonna do, we have it on the envelope, a dollar a day. So what does that mean? We're gonna do $365. So we're a little behind, 
but you do what you can do. I'm going to give you a dedication card. You're going to dedicate this amount of money to the work of the church, yes? You with me? Come on now. Yes, we can do this. And we're gonna dedicate everything we do to the work of this church. And in doing that, we're honoring God. We can do this. He's all we have. We're his ambassadors. And he's counting on us. Yes? Now, I'm going to ask you to please just stand. Brother Lee, give us a song on dedication. <laughs> <laughs> How about I give my all to Jesus. Yeah, give your all to Jesus. I give my all. Yes. Give it all to the Lord. I give my all to Jesus. Yes, yes. I give him, give him my all. Yes, everybody say, I give my all. Yes, if you give your all, all, raise your hands and let them know I give you my all, Lord God. Yes. Yes, I give my all to Jesus. Yes, I give my all to you. Glory to God. Sanctuary choir.
Jesus is alive. That is good news. Yes, it is. They went to the tomb looking for him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they were told he is not here, <laughs> for he has risen yeah, from yeah, the dead. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, won't you turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. Nehemiah chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. I'll be reading down to the sixth verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Mm -hmm. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. And he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders." So build we the wall, yeah. and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. 
for the people had a mind to work. My, my, my. The word of God for the people of God. Yeah, Thanks yeah, be to God. Yeah, yeah. For the next couple of moments, I would like to preach on the topic in the middle of a mess. In the <laughs> middle of a mess. All right. Now. Won't you pray with me? Yeah. Father God, we are so grateful for this time to assemble together. God, you are the only one who can speak to all of us, but say something different to each of us. So God, we ask that you would speak in this place and we'll give you all praise, all glory and all honor. Release your anointing because it is your anointing that destroys the yokes. In Jesus name, amen. In the middle of a mess. Last week, I, um, I had the privilege to preach for one of my friends, uh, 71st church anniversary, Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And as I boarded the plane to, to fly from Nork to uh, Fort Walton Beach, I looked at my seat from the distance and I saw a very healthy, large man seated where I was supposed to be seated next to me. And if I can be honest, I walked right past my seat and I went up to the stewardess and I said to her, ma'am, I cannot sit in my seat because there is a very large man seated next to me. So please find me a better seat next to a smaller person so I can enjoy my experience with American Airlines. Then I walked back to my seat and sat down with the expectation that the stewardess was going to get me a better seat. <laughs> a few minutes later, Sister Iris, the stewardess walked by my seat and she did not say anything, but she mouthed the words, I'm sorry, we are completely full. <laughs> so with disappointment, I laid my head back on the headrest and closed my eyes. <laughs> And moments later, the man who I didn't want to sit next to started talking to me. <laughs> and he started talking to me. <laughs> and he kept talking to me. And I said I put my head on the rest, and I put my head on the rest for a reason, because I was tired. <laughs> but come to find out, this man was a graduate student. He is also at, at Columbia University. This man is also a Jew, but he wanted to hear more about Christianity. So during this whole ride to Fort Walton Beach, we talked about faith and we talked about school. And by the time I got off the plane, the man was following me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. <laughs> What I'm saying is I had judged this man by his weight, his looks, his clothes, and did not understand who he was or the assignment that God was calling me to do. All right now. Church, how many times have we judged people by what they wear, their looks, their weight, who they are? how much tithe they, they can give or cannot give. And surely we judge them by their position because if you are large and in charge, I'll treat you nice. But if you don't do anything, then I'm going to treat you like you're trash. It's quiet, but some people have left the church because of our mean, rude, and disrespectful behavior. I'm not going to get no amens right there. But it's all right because my mama's here. So my mama will say amen. <laughs> For years and even centuries, the church has been a place of division. Especially our white evangelical churches have been complicit in perpetuating racism, sexism, misogyny, and even white supremacy. Jamar Tisby, the famed author, suggests that church has practiced a complicit Christianity rather than a courageous Christianity. Because a courageous Christianity lets the saints sit with the sinners. There are no big eyes and there are no little U's. A courageous Christianity does not look at the homeless man with judgment, but welcomes everybody from the rich to the ratchet. Because a courageous church knows 
that we are all sinners saved by grace. All right. And that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, none of us would be sitting here today, no matter what kind of car you drive today, no matter what title is in front of your name today, no matter what job you had in the corporate sector, only what you do for Christ will last. Hey. You may build great cathedrals, large and tall. You may build skyscrapers, but only what you do do for Christ will last. Some of you don't get it yet. What I'm saying is, you think you big and bad, but you ain't nothing because we are all sinners who are saved by grace. And that's why we come in here because we praise God for the blood that reaches to the highest mountain, that flows to the lowest valley, that gives us strength from day to day, and it has never lost its power. If you know the blood never lost its power, Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. You see, you must understand that the church is supposed to be a place of love. Yeah, yeah. The church is supposed to be a place where those who are hurting can find protection. The church is supposed to be a place where those who are burdened down can come and find refuge and solace and peace that surpasses all of their understanding and that guards their heart and mind through Christ Jesus. But I contend that we have allowed the church to become a social club. Mama, mama. Preach now. And if you're not in the right group, you don't get invited to certain things. Woo. Yeah. Now, I know we don't have any clubs in Franklin, St. John. I know we don't have any cliques in Franklin, St. John's. But in other churches, you go there and you have to be a, a part of a certain group of people. But how many people know that it's all right because you don't have to invite me to your little gathering because I know how to throw a party by myself. I, I know how to encourage myself. I can I can take my own. So you know what? I only want to go to the movies with y'all. You know what? Because I know how to take my own self to the movies. I know how to buy my own self popcorn. I know how to. OK, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me today because sometimes you got to know how to stand alone and say on Christ. The solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. You may not invite me to your house party. You may not invite me to your birthday party. You may not invite me to your social gathering. But it's all right because God invites me into his tabernacle. And I can enter into its gates with thanksgiving and into its courts with praise. I can be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Ain't that a mess? We have turned the church into a place where people who don't have power anywhere else come in here and they want all the power and they want all the control. But let me tell you something from the pulpit to the door, the only one who has all power is Jesus Christ. Even I as a pastor don't have all power, but there is somebody who is greater than I, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the great I am, his name is Jesus, and he has all power in his hands. Yeah. I believe that God is looking for a remnant. And that remnant is in this house today. Look at your neighbor and say, we are the remnant. Come on, look at him and say, we are the remnant. Now, I don't know why some of y'all come to church, but let me just pause and this ain't even in my sermon, but we need to start getting our attitudes together. We need to come in here with better attitudes. We need to come in here with better spirits. And let me say this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I would love for you to get yourself together before you get here. But if you have a bad attitude, just stay home. Just stay home. Yes, tell Bishop Show that I said it. We don't need people with bad attitudes coming into the house of the Lord. 
We need you coming here with a spirit of love, a spirit of kindness, a spirit of gentleness. If you are mad, angry, and frustrated, well, then you need to watch it on the live stream. My name is William D. Carter III, and I approve this message. Because I, I just believe that some of us cannot come to church because we love God. We can't. I mean, because if you love God, there should be some sign. I mean, some kind of sign. I mean, if you have breath in your body, there ought to be some kind of sign. Now, let me break it down for y'all who are saying, oh, well, pastor, I don't believe in all of that. I don't, pastor, I don't, I don't jump around and I don't, and I don't wave my hands. Well, guess what? You may not wave your hands and you may not jump around, but you better find some way to praise God. A tear better come down your eye or, or you know what? Your leg better be moving underneath the uh, pew or, or something, but you better find some way to give God the praise and the glory because the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. This is the house of the Lord and we come to worship the Lord. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. I may not praise him the way Brother Johnson praise him, but I praise God my own way. And my praise is acceptable unto God. But at first, I got to make sure that my mind is right. I got to make sure that my spirit is right. I got to make sure that if I have unforgiveness in my heart, that I'm going to my brother or my sister. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. It's tight, but it's right. Because some of us have ought against people and we have not gone to that person. And, and I know I'm preaching prophetically. But we need to go to some people and tell them the issues that we have with them yeah. so that we can move on because it's not only holding you back. So I got to go. Yeah. You need to go to somebody after this service and you need to tell them what's going on so that y'all can work it out. I'm very transparent. If I have an issue with somebody, I'm not going to let it linger. I'm going to sit down with you and we're going to have a hard conversation. And I'm going to see you next Sunday and don't act like you want to roll your eyes at me. You better <laughs> love on me because I loved on you. I came to you in love and you ought to receive it in love. Come on. Can we be real today? This is real talk. <laughs> Where was I at? I don't even know where I'm at. Where am I at? But we have to, if we are going to be the church, how do we want people to come in here and it's so much division and tension and yet we want people to come into our church? Do you know people can come in here and they can feel that tension that's in the house? That's right. So we got to work out our own that's mess right, before right. we invite somebody into our house. That's right. And next Sunday, when I come in here, I want from the from the time the praise and worship starts, I want to feel the glory of God and I want you to feel it. Do you know that you bring the glory with you? I shouldn't have to come up here and pump you up and, and prime you up and tell you God woke you up this morning and started you on your way. No, you ought to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you and your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah. You ought to thank God just for saving you. Ain't that a mess? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, as I endeavor to exegete and examine my text, we come to the book of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah just wasn't a leader, but he understood that before others serve him, he must learn how to serve others, which is why Nehemiah had served as a cupbearer to the king. 
because he knew how to serve before he was ever served. Because real leadership is not about others serving you, but how are you able to serve others? People look at me now, they see me as the pastor of Franklin St. John, but they don't know that I served under some great leaders. I held their bag. I walked where they walked. I sat down in that pew and didn't say anything because sometimes we want to say something, but you need to know when to shut your mouth because for a season, God wants to teach you something and you can't talk and learn at the same time. Yeah, I teach voice and I know Cookie's going to be able to relate with this. And when I'm teaching parts to the choir, if I'm working with the sopranos, Sometimes the sopranos will sing along with me and I say, no, no, let me sing it first because you don't know the part that I'm going to give you. That's right. So you can't sing it with me. You let me teach it to you and then you sing it back to me. That's right. What am I saying? Some of us are talking while God is talking and we need to learn how to be quiet so we can hear from God. What is the spirit of the Lord saying to me in this time and in this season? I got to learn to shut my mouth, but you can't shut your mouth because you like to talk all the time. Okay. I'll be nicer next Sunday, I promise but I got to give you what God has given me. It's about servant leadership. Servant leadership is about serving others and it is the ability to pour into and promote growth in other people. This text not only talks about a good leader, but it also talks about a good church. Somebody shout a good church. Good church. Somebody say a good church. Good church. Because y'all want me to be a good pastor, but I also need you to be a good church. Hello? We go hand in hand. We work together. It's not just me, but it's you and me together. We are the body of Christ. We stand at the door. We are the united front. We are not the divided front, but we must be united. How can two walk together except they be agreed? We ain't working together. If you're saying one thing to me and another thing to um, Reverend Griselda Johnson, that's a contrary divisive spirit, and we bind it in the name of Jesus. Now, let me just say this. We're not playing with spirits anymore either. We're calling a spirit a spirit. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness in high places. So we are casting down every negative word that has gone over this church. We are breaking every demonic word that has been spoken over your life, over my life, over the destiny of this church. And we are speaking life that this church shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We are speaking life. So, okay. Let me uh, break it down to you. Uh, many of you know that I'm uh, really finishing up on my dissertation, thanks be to God. And, and it's focusing on black male executives who work at Fortune 500 companies and their sense of belonging and their sense of connectedness to their organization. And, and I often ask them all the same question. I say, what imagery best describes your role in the organization? And, um, and, I, and I shared this with the people in Bible study, and I want to share it again tonight, that, that this one executive said to me, uh, he said, I see my role in the organization as, he said, have you seen The Lion King? And I said, yeah. He said, well, there's this one scene when Mufasa, the main character, is talking to his son, Simba, and he says to him, everything that the light touches is our kingdom. And this executive said to me, it is my job as a senior leader to protect and to encourage the people and to know what God has assigned to my hands. In other words, he said, I need to know my job. <laughs> oh, God. I need to know my job better than anybody else. 
Because as a leader, it is the leader's job, not just to do their job, but to help everybody else in the organization, to encourage, to inspire, and to motivate. So you leaders out there hearing this word, whether you are in person or virtual, you ought to be building people up and not tearing them down. I went to a church, I'm not going to say where, and I heard this pastor talking to their members. And I really thought, I was speechless as I am now. I was speechless because of how this pastor was speaking down to their parishioners. And I realized that that was about control. But you see, when you really have power, you don't have to do all that. Because when you know who you are, I don't got to raise my voice. Because, because whatever I say has power, even if I whisper it, it still has power. So you have to know who you are. Yeah. And I believe that there's some people here this morning that say that I know who I am. I know who God has called me to be. I know it. I know it. I know it. So let me just break this down. So if the choir is telling the ushers their job, then they don't understand the job that God has assigned them to do. All right. If sister so-and-so is telling brother so-and-so how to do his job, then apparently she doesn't understand her job. If you are always trying to tell somebody else what they need to do, then you don't understand your job. Because when you understand your job, you stay in your lane because the Bible says, if you are faithful over a few things, then I can make you ruler over many things. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a sign of good leadership. And in this year of 2024, a good leader is hard to come by because many are concerned about building their own kingdom. But God wants us to be building the kingdom of God for God's glory and God's honor, not our own. All right. My, my, my. So Nehemiah sets, sets, sets the example of what it means to be a good leader. And also what it means to be a good church. Somebody say a good church. Good church. The text opens by saying when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he became angry and raged. And he mocked the Jews saying in the presence of his associates in the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore themselves? Will they offer sacrifice? Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones from the piles of rubble? Even though they are burned? See, you must understand that Sanballat was the regional governor serving under the king of Persia and was also an enemy of the Jews and was not happy about the rebuilding of the walls. That's right. What are you saying, Pastor Carter? If I can pause there parenthetically, Leslie, because I think that it's necessary for me to tell you that everybody is not happy with your accomplishments. Everybody is not happy with your success. There are some people who are jealous and they are frustrated and they are furious because they can't understand how you've been able to do more in less time oh god but my grandmother used to say everybody who smiles in your face is not your friend but the songwriter said it like this backstabbers they smile in your face all the while they want to take your place oh y'all like y'all y'all don't know who i'm talking about Everybody is not celebrating your promotion. Everybody is not celebrating your new position. Everybody is not happy about our church uh, moving forward. Uh, matter of fact, the next time that somebody asks you, who do you think you are? Make sure to tell them that I am a child of the Most High King. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed going in and I'm if there's any blessed folks in the house, make some noise.
Sanballat was not just frustrated that the Jews were building the wall, but the text says that he mocked them. What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore themselves? Will they offer sacrifice? Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones from the piles of rubble, even though they are burned? You see, Sanballat must did not know about the God of Nehemiah and the God of the Jews. Because if he knew about their God, then he would not be questioning their worth ethic in their ability. Uh, Can I tell you that everybody does not know the power of the God that you serve? And I don't know about the God that you serve, but I came to tell you about the God that I serve. I serve a mighty God. He was time before time existed. When darkness covered the face of the earth, this God uh, said, spoke, uh, and said, let there be light. The same God that walked on water, the same God that does miracles, He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's a healer. He's a redeemer. He's strength. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's the stone that the builders rejected that has become the chief cornerstone. He is the great I am. If you know we serve a mighty God, give him a mighty praise. People of God, this pericope is clear that Sanballat was not the only one with the negativity. But the text points out that Tobiah the Ammonite, who was beside him, added, even if a fox climbs on whatever they build, their walls of stones will crumble. They weren't even done building the wall, and there was not one critic, but there was two speaking death to the project before it was even complete. Uh, Can I tell you that sometimes uh, uh, we talk about the people on the outside uh, who are speaking death uh, on what we are building, but sometimes it is our own who are in the house who are speaking death to the work in the organization. But today we come to speak life. Oh God, oh, we come to speak life because every now and again you have to understand that something and some people don't deserve a response in the natural but you have to know when to go into the spirit (laughs) some things are spiritual and they deserve a spiritual response Nehemiah responded to them with prayer somebody say prayer Prayer. somebody shout out prayer. prayer Somebody write prayer in the chat if you're online. Because the text says, listen, God, we despise. We are despised. Turn their insults to us back on their heads and make them like plunder in a captive land. Don't forget their iniquity or blot out their sins from your sight. They have thrown insults at the builders. Nehemiah did not engage with the people because some people and some things are not worthy of a response. Nehemiah goes right into intercession. He goes right into prayer because Nehemiah understands that prayer changes things. And I believe that there are some people here this morning that know that prayer changes things. I don't care what the doctor said. Prayer changes things. There are kidney survivors in this room because prayer changes things. There are heart disease survivors in this room because prayer changes things. There are people who are in abusive relationships and made it out because prayer changes things. There are some folks in this room who have been left for dead. The enemy tried to sift you as wheat, but you survived. So if you survived the test of time, make some noise and give God a worthy praise. The text continues on to say in verse 6, we continued on to build the wall. Jesus. All of us was joined together. And it reached half of its inner height because the people were eager to work. Somebody shout out, eager to work. 
Despite the opposition, the text says that they continue to build the wall. I don't know who I came to preach to today, but I came to tell you that it might not get easier. But I came to tell you that God is going to be with you as you build the wall. And sometimes building the wall gets messy. But sometimes you have to know you better put your hair in a bun or if it's. If it comes off, take it off because you might get dirty this time. Sometimes the work calls you to get dirty, but sometimes you got to get down and dirty. Yes, they lied on you, but keep on working. Yes, they spread rumors about you, but keep on working. Keep building. Why? Because he that hath begun a good work in you is faithful to see it through until its completion. Okay. All right. As I take my seat, preach long enough. Some of y'all looking at your clocks. Pastor kept us longer than he was supposed to. So I forgot to tell you about this one part of the plane ride because they did not get me a direct flight. They got me a layover. Next time I'm putting in, get me a direct flight. Don't put me on no layover, but that's neither here nor there. But I was on this other flight, and then the pilot got on, and the pilot said, we have hit a storm. And he said, the turbulence is going to be very bad. And can you believe, Dr. Martin Dickerson, that they did not serve any cashews? (laughs) They did not serve any drinks on the plane, Minister Simpson. They wouldn't even allow us to go to the bathroom because the turbulence was so bad. But all of a sudden, in the midst of the plane ride, I looked to the left side of the plane and I saw the sun shining through the window. And every time that the plane jumped and jerked, I looked at the sun and I felt better. (laughs) I don't know who I came to preach to this morning, (laughs) but in the middle of your mess, (laughs) I dare you to look at the sun. (laughs) Not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. When you become overwhelmed, look at the sun. Oh, when you're going through the mess, look at the sun. When you can't see your way, look at the sun. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber and sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Don't look at your marriage. Look at the sun. Don't look at your health. Look at the sun. Because things will change after a while. It will get better after a while. The sun's going to shine after a while. Dark clouds will pass over after a while. And we'll shout hallelujah after a while. I feel like preaching today. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to give them the praise. I came to give them the glory. So in the middle of the mess, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually As we all stand, whoo, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh-huh. Maybe you are here today. Maybe you are looking for a home Well, the doors of Franklin St. John are open. If you want to make this place your home, come now. Come now while the water is troubled. Maybe you're in the middle of a mess and you want to serve a God who gets down in the mess with you. And he walks with me. 
and he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Let's sing that one time. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the joy I see falling on my the Son of God discloses and he walks with me Father God, we are so grateful for this day. We're grateful for the word that came forth, God. The word that speaks to all of us. So God, we ask even now, God, that you would go with us and stand by us as we leave this place. But never your presence. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth both now and forevermore go in peace and not in pieces. Let all of God's people say amen. And he talked with me. There I am alone. And the joy he shares. None of All right. All right. Good good job. Good good job.
Good morning, and how are you? Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. God bless you. 